Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be going over all of the books I read in September. I read a total of seven books in September, which is really good for me. I know some people read like 15 or 16 books in a month and I just don't have time to do that. But it was a really good reading month for me. I really enjoyed most of the books I read and I'm excited to tell you about them. So I think what I'm going to do is go from my least favorite to my most favorite, mainly because I can't remember what order I read these books in. So the first book I read was actually on Kindle Unlimited. This is my not a Kindle, it's an iPad. I pay for Kindle Unlimited each month. It's $10 and I get access to as many books as I want. It's a lot of indie authors. It's a lot of self-published authors. So some of those books are hit or miss, but that's okay. The book I read on Kindle Unlimited is called Crave by Piper Lawson. It is an age gap student professor romance and I gave it two stars. I usually really enjoy an age gap trope or student professor trope. I literally married a woman who got her doctorate in psychology and taught psychology. The pros of this book is it's easy to read, it's very quick read, and it's easily accessible if you have Kindle Unlimited. But there were a lot of things I didn't enjoy about this book. I think it was t way too fast paced. The characters were super surface level and you just didn't get a lot of time to understand them as individual characters and then them as a not a couple but just as the romance it moved too quickly and there were so many plot holes that at certain times i asked myself how did we get here like what i don't understand what happened to get me to this point um it is the first book in i think a three-part series i might pick up the second book but probably not it left us on a cliffhanger and it wasn't like a happily ever after cliffhanger and usually those kinds of endings, I really want to go to the next book, but this one I just did not. The next book I read was A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This one I rated three stars. I did really enjoy it. My wife thought about getting this for me for my birthday last year, and um, I completely see why. It is an, a dark academia, queer, young adult contemporary fiction book. I really, really enjoyed the entire vibe and aesthetic of this book. I would say this is a perfect read if you're looking for something kind of spooky or dark to read in October. I actually kind of wish I had waited and read this in October. Mister, it's okay. This book is about five girls who are, I guess, technically in high school, but they're at a boarding school. They're having to kind of investigate these witchy murders that happened hundreds of years ago and things are kind of repeating. So what I liked about this book, the aesthetic, it's the perfect October read. Um, there is not a single man mentioned in this book and I love that. Something that I really enjoy about this book is it's very, very descriptive. You're getting a lot of pages about what the school looks like, what the world looks like, what the people look like. I would say it's a little bit of a mystery thriller and it does have some romance in it as well, but the central plot is definitely not romance. I love books that are over the top with descriptions, but sometimes I know that can bother other people. So depends on if you like it or not. I also always appreciate a good LGBT plus story. I don't feel like this plot has been super overdone. I know with some LGBT books, the romance plot line can kind of get overdone, but I think this was a really good one. Okay, on to what I didn't like. I think that this entire world that has been built is extremely unrealistic. They're at a boarding school. Um, I want to say they're 17, maybe 16, 17 years old, and there is a house mother. She's mentioned in chapter one and literally does not come up again until the very end of the book. The girls are doing their own thing. They're smoking, drinking, partying, just out in the open. They're skipping class. Um, it really feels like there are no consequences and there are no adults telling them what to do. Okay, now we're moving on to the Akatar series. I finished four out of the five books in the month of September. A Court of Thorns and Roses, I rated four stars. I listened to the first half on Audible and I highly recommend anybody who's starting Akatar do that. Get the dramatized audio. It includes music, it includes sound effects for the magic, it gives 
each um, character a narrator so you're actually listening to each voice rather than one person trying to make a voice for each character. It really helped me understand the world and uh, know how to pronounce names and just understand what was going on a lot more than I think if I had just started reading this from day one. Something that I didn't like about this first book is it's considered a Beauty and the Beast retelling and I just don't think that is accurate. I love Beauty and the Beast. I love Beauty and the Beast retellings. The entire story of Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorites and this one, I can see where people got that. It's a very loose comparison in my opinion and you don't really understand why this is considered a Beauty and the Beast retelling until the end of the book. A Court of Mist and Fury, I rated five stars. I know this is a favorite for pretty much everybody who is really into the Akatar series, and I completely see why. This one, I would say, is very, very romance heavy. Um, we're also getting completely new characters introduced, which I personally loved, and knowing what Akatar as a series is about, it made sense to me. If you have no idea what the Akatar series is about, it might be a little bit confusing to go from book one to book two because you're seeing a ton of new characters in this book, and a main character from this book is essentially gone for most of this book. Um, I really appreciate the themes that are starting to blossom by book two. So we're talking about sexual assault in both men and women. We're also talking about surviving abusive partners and healing from that. We're also looking into depression and how it manifests. Um, I think it's a really beautiful story. I just, I love this series so much. Book three, A Court of Wings and Ruin. I saw mixed reviews about this, so I was a little nervous going into it, but I rated this four stars. I really enjoyed it. It is, I think, the longest book, um, aside from A Court of Silver Flames, which is the fifth book and I have not finished yet. Um, I would say this one is much more fantasy rather than romance. I mean, we are definitely getting romance in this. You're also getting spice in this, but it's very action-packed. It's very action-heavy, and so at times it felt like it was kind of dragging on. I think this book could have been a lot shorter, but I did really appreciate how in-depth we got with um, the world building. So we're now adventuring out of the spring court and um, the night court, and now we're getting to see all of the other courts. I also really like that this book has introduced Nesta and Elaine, Feyre's two sisters, a lot more, and now we're seeing their personalities and their storyline kind of blossom and see them interact with other characters and I really enjoy that because Nesta is my favorite. A Court of Frost and Starlight is technically I guess considered a novella and a Christmas special. I am really excited to read this in December again. I thought it was a really great palette cleanser to transition from Feyre and Rysand's story. I also know that it's pronounced Rysand and that just doesn't make sense in my noggin. It's Rysand for me, sorry about it. I think this is a really great palette cleanser to transition from Feyre and Rysan's story over to Nesta and Cassian. Kamari, I'm trying to film. My one complaint about this book is it is written in first person point of view. Kamari, stop. My one complaint about this book is it's written in first person point of view in some chapters and then third person point of view in other chapters. And it is tough, at least for me, to transition from those, especially if the chapters are really short. If I read three pages that's in first person point of view and then have to transition over to third person point of view, I, my brain just had a hard time with it. But it's not a huge complaint. I still really enjoyed it. This book doesn't have a lot of like drama, in my opinion, which was nice because all of these other books are... I would say pretty heavy um, and so this is just like a little more lighthearted and you're also getting to see the point of view of other people in the inner circle that you didn't see in the other books. Also I'm realizing that I didn't tell you what I rated the other A Court of Silver Flames books. A Court of Wings and Ruin I rated four stars, A Court of Mist and Fury I rated five stars, and A Court of Frost and Starlight, I jumped between four and five stars, so I'm just gonna say four and a half stars. And I am reading A Court of Silver Flames. I am, I wanna say like two thirds of the way done. I anticipate that I'll finish it by the end of October. I'm almost like pacing myself because I love it so much. I love Nesta, I love Cassian, and I just don't want their story to be over. The last book is an audible audiobook. Um, I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. This is 
a memoir. If you don't know who Jeanette McCurdy is, she played Sam on iCarly. Um, I would say she was pretty popular in the Nickelodeon kind of era. I remember watching her growing up and her book was incredible. One, had no idea that any of this was going on for her, but um, she does dive into her eating disorder. She does dive into her abuse from her parents and she's exploring a topic that I don't think a lot of people are comfortable with. I don't think a lot of people understand parental abuse to the degree that I think Jeanette experienced. And so it's tough to pick up a book that says, I'm glad my mom died and not feel like kind of jarred from that. Um, but I think it was a beautifully, beautifully written book. Jeanette McCurdy is the one who voiced it for Audible and she did a great job. I was hooked. I was listening to it on my way to work, on my way home. Anytime I could get, I was putting my headphones on and listening to it. I really, really enjoyed it. I rated it five stars. Okay, those are the books that I read in the month of September. I'm really excited to continue reading in October. I have a lot of spooky books that I have on my TBR, and I think I'm gonna make a quick little video just letting you guys know what I'm working on reading. Let me know in the comments what you're reading, and let me know what book recommendations you have, and I will... <laughs> oh my god. And I will see you in the next one.